I asked myself the same question when I saw the photos of these monks who have apparently gone through the whole process of becoming a mummy by themselves while they were still alive. It's a very fascinating thing to me. Like we know, it's common for monks to give up every worldly thing they own and live the life of a hermit. But to give up food and water till you starve to death and become a mummy? How exactly does one do that? And more importantly, why would someone do that? And that's what I'll be explaining in today's video. So the name of this bizarre practice is Sokushin Butsu and it's believed that between the 11th and 20th century, many hundreds of monks have tried it. But only 24 monks have successfully managed to mummify themselves. The number may well be higher as it's likely some mummies were never recovered from their tombs. Sokushin Butsu roughly translates to becoming a Buddha in this body. Simply put, it's a way to cheat death to enter a state of eternal meditation. Sokushin Butsu refers to the practice of self-mummification that was followed by a mountainous dwelling sect of Buddhist monks who were called Shugendo. The practice required the monks to partake in a strict diet and rigorous exercise before sealing themselves in a tomb while they were still alive. The practice was first pioneered by a priest named Kukai over a thousand years ago. Kukai was the founder of the Shingon sect of Buddhism, which is the sect that came up with the idea of enlightenment through physical punishment. A successful mummification takes upwards of 10 years. Throughout Japan, you can find around 20 Sokushin Butsu monks. 17 are open to viewing, but many are not. Some of the most famous dwell in Yamagata prefecture, specifically Mount Udono. It's said that the local lakes near Mount Udono house high levels of arsenic, which might have played a part in the success of so many Sokushin Butsu in that area. Like the Roman Catholics and the Eastern Orthodox religions, these Buddhists believe that an incorrupt body, a body having delayed decomposition, indicated amongst holiness. For a thousand days, the priests would eat a special diet consisting only of nuts and seeds while taking part in a regimen of rigorous physical activity that stripped them of their body fat. In order to begin the self-mummification process, the monks would adopt an extremely strict diet. Foraging through nearby forests, these monks would survive only on tree roots, nuts, berries, tree bark and pine needles. One source also reports finding river rocks in the bellies of these mummies. This diet was called Mokujikigyo, literally eating a tree. This extreme diet served two purposes. First, it began the body's biological preparation for mummification as it eliminated any fat and muscle from the frame. It also prevented future decomposition by depriving the body's naturally occurring bacteria of vital nutrients and moisture. On a more spiritual level, the extended isolated quest for food would have a hardening effect on the monk's morale, disciplining him and encouraging contemplation. This diet would typically last for a thousand days, though some monks would repeat the course two or three times to best prepare themselves for the next phase of Sokushin Butsu. To begin the embalming process, monks would drink a tea brewed of Urushi, the sap of the Chinese lacquer tree, as it would render their bodies toxic to insects and maggots after death. At this point, not drinking anything more than a small amount of cyanized water, the monks would continue with their meditation practice. As death approached, the monk would rest in a small, tightly cramped pine box, which his fellow monks would lower into the ground about 10 feet below the earth's surface. Equipped with a bamboo rod as an airway for breathing, monks covered the coffin with charcoal, leaving the buried monk a small bell which he would ring to notify others that he was still alive. For days, the buried monk would meditate in total darkness and ring the bell to indicate that he is alive. When the ringing stopped, monks above the ground assumed that the underground monk had died. They would proceed to seal the tomb where they would leave the corpse to lie for another thousand days. After waiting for about a thousand days, the ground monks would open the tomb to see if the mummification was successful. If the monk had been successfully mummified, he was immediately seen as a Buddha and put in the temple for viewing. The monk's body would be dressed in robes and placed in a shrine where humanity 
could await his reawakening. Those who failed the process and their bodies showed decomposition were sealed back in their tombs. Although they were cherished for their sacrifice, but they were not worshipped as Sokushin Butsu. Simply put, there would be no worship for their remains. An exorcism would be performed, and their remains would be reburied. All those years of self-starvation, those fun days spent alone in a dark chamber, and your remains become an object of caution rather than worship. But the main question still remains. Why would someone go through this excruciatingly painful practice? What would be their main motivation? Well, the monks chose this path for many reasons. Practitioners of self mummification saw this practice not as suicide, but as a path to immortality. And the Sokushin Butsu saw the process as transcendence rather than death. Sokushin Butsu believed the sacrificial act done in emulation of a 9th century monk named Kukai would grant them access to Tusita heaven where they would live for a million years and be blessed with the ability to protect humans on earth. In their eyes it was not suicide but rather a sacred process meant to better the world and themselves. They would remain in their mummified state which was viewed as a death-like trance until they would be called upon to assist Maitreya for the benefit of all humankind. Whatever were the specifics of their spiritual quest, the Sokushin Butsu would have undertaken self-mummification as a form of spiritual transformation for the benefit of others. This dangerous practice was finally outlawed by the government of Japan in the 19th century, although it continued well into the 20th century before finally falling out of practice. The practice is now outlawed and not practiced today by any living Buddhist sect. The last monk to die of Sokushibutsu did so illegally, passing years later in 1903. His name was Bukai, and changing laws meant that not all successful Sokushibutsu were enshrined. When the priest Bukai Shonin died in 1903, he was interred and was supposed to be exhumed after three years. But exhumation was illegal in Japan at that point in time. When Bukai was eventually exhumed, it was in 1961 by a team of researchers who found the monk to be quite well preserved. So I hope this video has answered all your questions related to self mummification. But I want to ask you, what did you find the most interesting about this whole process? I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to show your support. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next video.